being interested in wildlife and animals, like I said, um, conservation was obviously a very strong part of the, the interest and the work that we started with. And in 1982, I think it was, there was this really horrible incident of uh, seven villagers being killed in the Bharatpur uh, Kela Dev National Park, the bird sanctuary in Rajasthan, because overnight uh, the government stopped grazing, buffalo grazing, which had traditionally been a right inside the area. They stopped it. The villagers tried to forcibly enter. There was police firing and seven villagers were killed. And that really shocked us when we got the news. Uh, we immediately had an investigation. Kalpurik did an investigation immediately after the firing. And uh, in a way, that kind of brought home a certain, uh, you know, a violence of conservation, which otherwise was not really so apparent uh, to me. But to say that, you know, in the name of protecting wildlife, if people are being killed, there's some problem there. There's, there's, there's something fundamentally problematic there. Um, so there was violence against animals, which I started off with, but then there's also violence against people in the name of animals. And clearly there's a, some flaws there. Uh, it wasn't just about saying, do we, do we want an alternative development form? But that development fundamentally seemed to us to be violence. There was something at the, at the root of the concept itself, not just how it was being implemented, but at the root of the concept itself, which it seemed to us to be violence. And actually since then, at least my own uh, inclination has, has been to look at alternatives to development if we want peace and harmony and non-violence, rather than simply saying inclusive development, sustainable development, etc. When somebody says that, look, it didn't, it didn't achieve its objective of stopping the dams, probably because it was non-violent, uh, one can only look at the history of, of violent rebellions, etc. across the world and see that probably an equal number, even more, might have been unsafe successful. I know that in this particular case, for instance, Gujarat government being Gujarat government, uh, they wouldn't have hesitated to move uh, armed police in, um, as has happened in so many other parts of India, right? So uh, instead of it being a 30, 40 year long movement and still being active, at least to be able to get some semblance of rehabilitation for the people who are being displaced and to continue raising those issues as a public uh, discussion, uh, I think that wouldn't have happened. Within a few years, that thing would have just died down because you would have had police violence and everything would have been scattered. Um, but that's a, that's a tactical issue, you know, whether one uses that as, as a tactic or not. I think the, the power of it being nonviolent was the, uh, what should I say, the sort of the ethical message that was being given across not just the Narmada Valley, but all of India and all the world, the whole world. If you look at it, in a way that kind of spawned a whole lot of other similar nonviolent protests in many other parts of the world, some of which were in fact successful in stopping destructive projects. Nonviolence as a strategy and then nonviolence as, a, uh, as an ethic, as a, as a principle. And sometimes you can actually see that they may not necessarily come together. And I think the example I can think of uh, is the Kurdish, uh, women's movement or the Kurdish ethnic, ethnic uh, movement in, uh, uh, in, in, in Western Asia between you know, Syria, Iraq, Iran, and uh, Turkey, where uh, the historically persecuted uh, ethnic community, the Kurdish, have been trying to create a whole region of autonomy and uh, freedom and democracy and eco-feminism and so on. And they have an army. There's a women's army and a, a men's army, right? Now, I, I remember speaking a few years back to a couple of their uh, leaders, and I said, look, um, you profess ecofeminism and radical democracy and so on, which to my mind uh, would also have to be fundamentally based on an ethic of nonviolence towards each other and towards the rest of nature. Uh, so how do you justify an army? And what they said was that we don't want to have the army. The army is purely self-defense because if it wasn't there, we would be totally wiped out. Um, and so it's, it, we, we don't use it as aggression in any form and we will not use it as aggression. It's self-defense. As soon as these neighboring nation states or whatever it is, stop uh, persecuting us in the way they're doing it and it's, it's very violent persecution, uh, we will disband the army. So I think it's very important to look at um, uh, um, uh, the pluriverse of radical alternatives, which all point towards peace, harmony, solidarity, nonviolence, et cetera, uh, rather than thinking of one umbrella 
that will that we all then sort of uh, fit under and they are, i mean at least those in the the radical degrowthers completely accept this so we're trying to build we're trying to see okay how do you build these sorts of global alliances built on this respect of diverse plural ways of uh, living being dreaming understanding doing all of which challenge the currently dominant system but are internally quite diverse we have since 2014 we've also been uh, trying to see if we can build a collective vision of what a radical uh, transformation or what an ideal society would be so we have a evolving document which is called in search of radical alternatives and one part of that is a statement of ethics and values and principles and non violence figures there so but i remember at least two or three vikalp sangams in which it has been very heated debate uh, on this not so much the non acceptance of non violence but what does it mean in real life what does it mean in the movements what does it mean in our relationship with each other with the rest of nature etc and there's no there's no uh, total agreement on the specifics of it but at least so far the several thousand people who have taken part in this and this range from very hardcore gandhian to very uh, marxist leftist kind of uh, groups to i mean different kinds of organizations adivasi groups dalit groups etc uh, urban environmentalist feminist groups and so on that there seems to be a broad agreement that non violence should be one of the principles um.